Welcome back to Blau Dev, everyone. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to convert your API response object into clean classes in Dart. So let's dive into it. So for those of you that have seen my free CodeCamp video on the cryptocurrency wallet, uh, we're gonna be using the same APIs for this example. So what we have here is a response object from Bitcoin uh, query. And basically what it's gonna have, it's gonna have some just basic string uh, response objects. We're gonna have like a lists of objects. So you can see here we have like this homepage object, which has a list of strings. Um, there's some more list of strings and whatnot. Um, repos URL, which has a GitHub. There, there's a lot of nested values. And so we're, gonna, we're not gonna do the entire thing because this object is massive and it would take a really long time to convert this into a clean object but i'm going to show you a way that we can do this and we're going to just pick and choose a couple of select variables from this response so what i got here is i've already set up just a basic api request so this response value is going to equal the response from this api endpoint and we're going to call it by clicking a simple outline button so let me go ahead and spin that up and let me go ahead and enlarge the text here so you can see a little bit better what we're doing and what we're going to be working on is taking this response object and creating some classes in Dart that will have methods to parse JSON into them. So you can see here it's kind of small. Let me see if I can blow this up. Uh, we have our test API button. When you click it, um, it's just going to hit this API endpoint um, to prove that that's actually happening. Dot to string. And it's called response. Okay, go ahead and hot restart that. The wrong one. Grab that one, hit it. If I open up the debug console, you'll see here instance of response. Let's hit it one more time just to prove that that actually is happening. There you go. So the value that we're gonna be accessing, first of all, let's say uh, var body equals response.body. And what we're gonna be doing from this point on is response.body is going to give us um, this value. Let me find it, this object. And so what we need to do is take that object and create classes for it. So I'm gonna create a class called Bitcoin, or eh, let's just call it coin. So I'm gonna call it coin.dart. I'm gonna call it class coin. Coin is going to have a couple of variables. It's gonna have an ID. And I'm going to make that final. Um, final list of strings called something. And we'll leave it at that for now. Um, and we'll build upon this as we go. This dot ID, this dot something. Okay. So now that we've set up this basic class as two values, ID and something, we are going to now create a factory method. So factory coin dot from JSON. And it's going to have a value of map string dynamic called JSON. Okay. And we are going to say, excuse me, um, we're gonna say return coin and we'll say ID is going to be equal to uh, JSON. I believe they just called it ID. Let's double check that. Um, if we scroll up to the top, is there a faster way to scroll? Okay. So yes, it was called ID. And we have a list of string, which we will tag under categories. So we'll call categories will be our something list. And for that, we are actually going to do something um, slightly different. When you're dealing with just a single value, so strings, integers, doubles, that sort of thing, booleans, um, you can simply just say JSON and reference the value. Because JSON is going to equal this object in JSON format. So basically what we're doing is we're saying just set the value of ID in that object and that's, that's your value. But it gets a little bit more complicated when we're dealing with things such as lists um, or objects. 
because we can't just say, um, you know, this value can't just Dart takes a little bit more massaging to get the result that you want. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to say, um, we're going to say object is equal to JSON categories. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say something is going to be equal to a new list of strings um, dot from object. Okay. I believe that's all I want to do here. Okay. Then we're going to say, um, let's import that class first of all. Coin dot dart. And now we're going to be able to say uh, coin coin is equal to um, coin dot from JSON body or I'm sorry JSON there we go JSON decode body okay fine save it okay and let's print out coin dot to string give it a hard restart let's go ahead and hit that test api instance of coin okay let's get a little bit more detailed let's say coin dot something dot to string okay you can see here it's a list it has cryptocurrency in it and let's test our ID. And print out the coin. So you can see here, we've properly parsed it into our object. And so, so far we've covered um, single variables, how to do that and how to do lists of variables. So to do a list, it's very similar. The only thing we need to do that's a little bit different. And honestly, you don't need to pull out this object here. You could just say, um, that you could just say a uh, list dot from and then pass the value. It's just, it starts to get pretty big and, and messy when we do it that way, um, but it works the same. Um, and you can replace this, say if it's a list of bools, you could um, do a list of bools. It's not gonna like it because something's a list of strings, but you could do that with any other type of variable as well. Now there's one more thing and I'm gonna create a new value for this. Let's just call it something.dart. And this is going to be a new class called something. And let's say that something has just a single variable. So let's just say string, final string, variable, uh, something, this dot variable. Um, so let's say we have this class, right? And let's say that coin has a variable of type class something. So we're dealing with nested objects here. So this complicates our from JSON a little bit more. Um, and so we can't just say, um, we can't just say like JSON, whatever. We can't, we can't do that. It gets a little bit more complicated when we add in this nested object structure. What we're first gonna do is we want to basically repeat this from JSON method within our something class. Um, so you always wanna go to the furthest branch of classes, of nested classes, and then we're gonna build off of that. And so we're gonna say factory something dot from JSON. And for variables, we're going to do once again a map of type string dynamic JSON. And we're going to return our class object something. And variable is going to equal, and let's just pick a value here. Let's look at this API. Um, so we're gonna use this image object. And so um, I'm gonna keep it named something and this will be still be a variable, but we're gonna be pulling out uh, small. So whatever small is equal to, 
that is going to be set to variable. And I know it's a little confusing, but bear with me here. The idea that I'm trying to get across is that if you have a nested object inside of one of your other classes, this is the way that you can parse it from JSON properly into that class. So we have this value small that we're going to be turning from JSON. Um, if we go back to coin, something is equal to temp. So now what we have to do is we need to say temp, and we're going to say um, something dot from JSON, and now we're going to pass in the value that we want it to look at. So we want it to look at this value for image. And what this will do is this will pass the JSON object for image, which will essentially set it equal to this entire block right here. Then what's going to happen is since it's calling this from JSON method, it's going to go to something, it's going to trigger this from JSON method, and this JSON object being passed isn't going to be the whole response object, but is only going to be the JSON object passed, which in this case is image. So it's going to look at this and it's going to say, okay, where is the value for small? And I want to set that value equal to my variable. And once again, similar to coin, you'll do this for all of your different variables that you need. And once it's successfully done that, it'll complete all the other from JSON conversions for this coin class, and then we're done. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back to our API. Let's say something is equal to coin dot something. Let's import this class. There we go. Oh, wait. Going to temp, temp. That's what it's called, not something. That's why it's getting angry with me. Okay. And now let's print something dot variable dot two string. So what we should get here when we print this out is we should get this image URL. So let's go ahead and test that out. Let's hit restart. We'll open our app, test. Oops. There it goes. It just pulled open that URL for us. So that's the process of turning in a complex response object and turning it into a clean, malleable object in Dart. So we can use these custom built um, from JSON methods and we can pick and choose the different variables that we want to set and create objects um, from that JSON object. I hope this video was useful for you all. Um, I also wrote a Medium article on this and expanded a little bit more on some other methods by which you can parse from JSON into Dart. And so if you're interested in that, I'll include a link in the description below. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time.